Hi, my name is Amanda Rocha. I'm an estate planning and probate attorney in California. And today we're going to talk about what happens when your parents pass away and what is it that you need to do. Before I get into that, I want to give you my contact information. You can find me on my website at www.amandarochalaw.com. You can follow along on my social media at Amanda Rocha Law, or you can comment down below if this platform allows you to do that. I have some personal experience with this as my, mo my own mother passed away earlier in 2022, and I help people with this every single day. It's a sensitive time, and the very last thing that you're going to want to do is handle paperwork and deal with finances and things like that. But the unfortunate truth is that the longer you wait to do it, the harder it will be and the more consequences there will be. So the first, very first thing you'll have to do, obviously, is secure any animals or dependents that your parent may have had in their home. Make sure that all of that is handled. And then once, and that the house is locked up, apartment, whatever it is, there's no random access to this area. Once that's done, funeral arrangements have been made and completed, then you can move on to some of the other things you will need to make a list of what you know that your parents assets are and look for estate planning documents usually these things are going to be kept in a binder sometimes people keep a digital file if you have access to their computer records um, look for anything wills trusts anything that says estate plan something like that if you don't find anything, but you know that they have a safe deposit box and suspect that there might be documents there, even if you do not have a key, you are by law entitled to enter that safe deposit box for the purpose of looking for estate planning documents only. At that point, without a key or without your name being on as a verified user, you aren't going to be able to take anything from the box unless it's an estate planning document. Now, if you are a verified user or you share the box with them or you have the key, that's a different story, but you are allowed to look just for the purpose of locating estate planning documents. Once you find those documents, you still need to take an inventory of what your parent owned, property, um, any kind of personal assets, everything that they could have had that has a value. You're going to need to figure out whether that was something that they owned separately by themselves or jointly with other people. You'll also need to figure out whether they owned it in a trust or not. So these are different categories that you're going to have to make when you write this down. It's important to know that probate might still be required, even if your family member had um, an estate plan in, in place, because if you don't add assets to your trust, they will fall outside of probate. So let me give you a few examples that I wrote down for you of items that um, you'll need to verify that they had or didn't have and look up the, um, or guesstimate <laughs> the value for those things. So first of all, if they owned a home, you do not need to hire an assessor right away, but just know that if they owned a home in California, they most likely are going to qualify for probate if it, that home wasn't jointly owned um, as something other than tenants in common and or if that home wasn't already in a trust. So if they owned a home and it was, let's say, um, joint tenancy with the right of survivorship or if they had the home in trust, then I don't think that you'll necessarily need to file probate. But if it's owned outright or even with a mortgage, but if it's owned without either of those things, um, probate is most likely going to be necessary. You also need to look at bank accounts, life insurance, any kinds of retirement accounts, um, vehicles. Uh, let's see. You'll want to know, oh, cash on hand, any jewelry, art, that kind of thing, personal property. All of those things are going to be something you need to write down. Now, probate assets are different than just regular assets, right? So let's say your family member did not have any trust or estate plan going on at all. Then anything that is separately owned and not jointly owned and not in a beneficiary style account will be added towards probate. If it's a life insurance and there's a beneficiary listed or if it's a, a retirement account beneficiary listed, those will not be counted. Uh, so, if their, if their estate is 
adding up to more than $184,500 and you should contact a probate attorney to help you through those steps. If it does not, and it's very clear that it does not, or they had everything handled in an estate plan, um, then you'll need to go through that estate plan and work with whoever's listed as the trustee or personal representative to go through what needs to be done with their property. If there was no estate plan and they do not reach the probate threshold, you still have things you need to do. Um, you're going to need to alert mortgage the mortgage company if there was a mortgage on the house. You're going to need to alert um, property management, insurance, employers. Let people who are expecting so them to show up or make um, a payment immediately on something very important like a house that this person has passed away. Um, you can fill out a document for non-probatable estates. It's called a personal property affidavit, and that is something you can download from the Judicial Council's website. That document will allow you to go to a bank and prove with that notarized document that there isn't a probate case necessary in order to collect their funds. Uh, you'll also need to do things like perhaps file taxes on their behalf. Um, and, and even still, you're, you're going to have to deal with debtors with or without probate. I highly recommend that you go to my website, www.amandarochalaw.com, go to the blog section and look for the creditors section. There are, or the post on creditors, there are um, things that you can and must and maybe shouldn't tell creditors about someone when they've passed away, depending on if you're listed as their personal representative or trustee. So go definitely check that out, figure out what you should be telling them. Um, you shouldn't just be alerting every single creditor that you could possibly think of without a probate. There are rules and things that need to happen and who needs to tell them. Um, other than that, the county recorder's office will need to know if they owned property. Even if their property was jointly owned or there's a trust, there's, there are forms that need to be filled out and given to them. Um, the credit reporting agencies should know so that there is no fraud on their behalf. And basically, anything else that you can think of would probably fall into the who needs to know for funeral purposes and not so much for paperwork purposes. If you have questions, please drop them in the comments below if that's something that you can do. You can contact me through my website and schedule a strategy session. We could talk about your parents' situation and whether or not they might need probate. Um, I'm in California and I only practice in California. You can find me at www.amandarochalaw.com. You can go to my social media at Amanda Rocha Law or comment down below for more questions and answers. Thank you.